Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here to talk to you about Taylor polynomials and Taylor series. A Taylor series representation of a function centered at x equals some constant is a power series that looks like what we've got here. So our function, as long as we have an infinite series, uh, will be equal to this entire infinite series. Uh, we have f of c, we have f prime of c, f double prime of c. So you'll notice this is similar to Maclaurin series, except instead of plugging in zero, we may be plugging in some other constant where our Taylor series is centered. You can also see if you viewed some of our other videos on power series that our center is x equals c because we have x minus c, x minus c squared, x minus c cubed, etc. So you can see that x equals c in that respect is also the center of this series. You'll notice that we have a first derivative, a first power of x minus c, we have a second derivative, we have a second power of x minus c, we have a two factorial. So the patterns going on here, we have an order of derivative, we have a power of x minus its center, and we have a factorial that are all the same. In this case, this is third derivative, third power, three factorial. So the next term would be fourth derivative, fourth power, four factorial. This will be a good approximation of our function as long as our center is in some interval of convergence for f of x. So if this series only converges at its center and it doesn't converge for some interval around its center, it may be a really junky approximation. Obviously to take all of these derivatives and plug c into them, we also assume that all of the derivatives are defined at x equals c as well. So again, remember, this is super similar to what we did with Maclaurin series. We built an infinite degree polynomial, uh, but Maclaurin series were always centered at zero. So we were always plugging zero into the derivatives. You'll notice that our center here, now that you've talked through the center of a power series, you probably see with x, x squared, x cubed. We don't have an expression like x minus c cubed. You can see that the center is zero here. So Maclaurin series is just a specific Taylor series where c is zero. When we did Maclaurin series, we were we're actually doing Taylor series, but we were doing the simplest kind just to introduce them to you. So a Maclaurin series is actually a very particular type of Taylor series where the center of the power series is zero. Some reasons to use Maclaurin over Taylor. Obviously, it's probably easier to, in most functions, to plug in zero than to plug in a lot of other numbers and evaluate those derivatives. So it may be shorter to do that. Uh, you may also need to just simply approximate the function very well right around its y-intercept, right around x equals zero. And so it would require less terms for you to get a very nice approximation around that y-intercept if you start approximating really close to where you need that good approximation. Using a Taylor series instead of Maclaurin, obviously if the function isn't defined or any of its derivatives aren't even defined at zero, then that's bad because we're not going to be able to plug these in and get anything for our series. Also, it's possible maybe you don't want an approximation of the entire function or an approximation around the y-intercept. Maybe you want an approximation that is much farther over horizontally, maybe a very negative or a very positive value, and you just want a good picture of the function and an approximation right around some value that is far away from zero. So that's another reason to use a Taylor series instead of a Maclaurin series for approximating a function. So we're going to work through some examples of generating some Taylor polynomials here. When we talk about a Taylor series, we're talking about the entire thing, an infinite number of terms. When we're talking about a Taylor polynomial, we're just looking at the partial sum, all right? So we're stopping at some point here. This one says to write a degree three Taylor polynomial for the function square root x centered at x equal four. So a degree three Taylor polynomial means we will stop at the x cubed term for our polynomial. This is a good example of a function to use a Taylor polynomial versus a Maclaurin polynomial, uh, the function square root x, because you notice we have an endpoint at zero, and so if I were to try and approximate around zero, uh, the derivatives are actually undefined at zero. So we're going to actually center our approximation at x equals four and use a Taylor polynomial up to degree three here. Okay, so looking at our formula, obviously we will need the first three derivatives and we'll need to plug the center into those derivatives to get our series. So we'll go ahead and write down first our f of x. I'm gonna write it down as a power so that it's easy to do derivatives. So we'll call that x to the one half instead of square root x. So my f prime, the first derivative, I would get the one half comes out front and we would get the power goes down by one, so we'll get the negative one-half power there. The second derivative, f double prime of x, 
we'll get a negative one half comes out, multiplies the one half we already had, so that's negative a fourth. And then decreasing the power by one again, we'll get negative three halves. And I'll need a third since I want a third degree Taylor polynomial. So if we take another derivative, negative three halves comes out, that will make a positive three over eight in the front. The power goes down by one, we'll get negative five halves power there. So we have our derivatives, and now we'll need to plug in our center, right? F prime of C, F double prime of C, etc. Our center is at x equals four. So we will first, our F of C is going to be F of four. That's going to be 4 to the 1 half, and the square root of 4 we know is 2. So that's our f of c. Our f prime of c, f prime of 4, that will be 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Well, that's going to be 1 half times 1 over the square root of 4. So that will be another one half, so in this case we get one fourth. All right, our f double prime of c, so f double prime of four, plugging in four into this I would get negative one fourth, and then I would get four to the negative three halves. So we'll get four to the negative three halves. Okay, let's do a little bit of work here. So we have negative one fourth, um, if we take the reciprocal of this, that will be the negative part, right? So that would be one-fourth to the three-halves power. So the over two part is telling me to take the square root of that, and then I'm going to cube it, right? So I'll have negative one-fourth. The square root of this four here is going to be two, and then if I cube two, I will get eight. So that's actually one over eight. Any power of one on the top is going to be one, right? So this would be negative one over 32. Let's go ahead and do our third derivative. So if we take f triple prime of c, then we would have 3 over 8, and we'll have 4 to the negative 5 halves. Let's do this similarly. So I have 3 over 8. The negative power tells me make that a 1 fourth to the regular old 5 halves. This says take the square root and then take the fifth power, right? So let's see, 3 over 8 times, we would have, I'll write it down, one half, and we want to take that to the fifth power, right? So that's going to give us a 32 on the bottom. So we'll get three over eight times 32, which happens to be 256. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and circle. These will be my coefficients that I plug in to my series. And then I also need to plug in my center x equals four into all of these terms as well. So we'll go ahead and slide down slightly and do this. So we're gonna go ahead and say Taylor polynomial of degree three, I'm gonna call that P sub three of X. So that will be F of C, F of four was just two, so my first term is two, plus F prime of C, X minus C. So we have plus one fourth, and we have X minus C is gonna be X minus four, four was our center. Our next term, the second derivative, the square of x minus c over two factorial. So our f double prime of c is negative one over 32. And we get x minus four all squared over two factorial. The next one, I have three over 256. So I say plus three over 256 and that will be times x minus four all cubed over three factorial. We can go ahead and simplify these a bit if we would like. So let's go back and at least clean it up. So we'll say two plus x minus four all over four, and then two factorial is like two, so I have minus x minus four squared, 32 times 2 would give us 64 there. We could write that, we don't have to. Here I could at least reduce the 3, right, with the 3 down here, so that would take the 3 off the factorial. That would just be 2 times 1 then, right? So I would just have 2 times the 256, so we'll actually get 512.
And so here we've just plotted our third degree Taylor polynomial just so you can see that it's a nice approximation of the graph of square root x at least around x equals 4. You can see as we get down toward the end of the function obviously it's not a very close approximation. As we get out past maybe 7 or 8 it looks like we start to veer off a little bit from the function as we get out that far. But right around 4 it's a very nice approximation if that's where we needed to approximate the function. We'll do one more example here in the video. We're going to write a degree 4 Taylor polynomial for the function natural log of x. We're going to center our approximation at x equals 1. A good reason to center our approximation at x equals 1. Uh, we can't use Maclaurin because ln of x isn't even defined at 0. 0 is not even in the domain, so we certainly couldn't find any of the derivatives at x equals 0. So we're going to approximate right around its x-intercept. So we'll write down the function first. Our function is ln of x. And our first derivative, the derivative of ln x, will be 1 over x. Our second derivative, so this will be x to the minus 1, so we'll get negative 1 x to the minus 2. So we'll get negative 1 over x squared. And then the third derivative of x so this is, I'll write this down at negative x to the minus 2. So the negative 2 comes out, I'll get a positive 2. That would be x to the minus 3, so that's 2 over x cubed. So I'll go ahead and write that down as well if you prefer that. Our fourth derivative. So we will have the negative 3 comes out, that becomes negative 6. And then the power goes down by 1 again, so we'll get x to the 4 there on the bottom, x to the minus 4. That's the same as negative 6, x to the negative 4. Okay, so we'll now plug in x equals 1. Fortunately, that's pretty easy for these. So f of 1 is going to be ln of 1, and ln of 1 is 0. If we plug in and we get f prime of 1, that's 1 over 1, that's going to be 1. If we plug in 1 to the second derivative, we get negative 1 over 1, so that's negative 1. And then if we plug 1 into the third derivative, we will get 2 over 1 cubed, that will be 2. And then plugging into the fourth derivative, so the fourth derivative evaluated at 1, we'll get negative 6 over 1 to the 4, that's going to be negative 6. So what you'll notice here, our first term is actually 0, so we won't have any constant term in the front here. So our fourth degree, I'll write p sub 4 of x, our fourth degree Taylor polynomial is going to equal, so I have 0 for the first term, f of c, I'll just write that in for now, so 0 plus 1 times x minus c, which is x minus 1, remember this is our c here, c equals 1, and then we will have plus the second derivative, second power, 2 factorial, so that'll be minus 1, I'm just going to write it all in and simplify later, x minus 1, all squared, over 2 factorial. Third derivative, third power, 3 factorial, so we'll have plus 2, x minus 1, all cubed, over 3 factorial. And then the last one will have minus 6, that's our last derivative value there, x minus 1 to the 4 over 4 factorial. Now let's clean this up a bit. But we don't need the 0, we don't need the 1's here, right? So our fourth degree polynomial, or this ln here, is just going to be x minus 1 minus x minus 1 squared. Um, now you might notice some reducing that happens here. I'm going to go ahead and just call this 2 factorial 2, and if you don't see it, maybe you will in a second. So if I reduce the 2 from the 3 factorial, so think about 3 times 2 times 1 down here, if I reduce the 2, that just leaves me with a 3, right? So if we go ahead and just do that, then I will get x minus 1 cubed over 3. And for the last one, think about the 4 factorial, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, the 6 is going to reduce with 3 times 2. So I'll just be left with 4, and that's a nice little simplification, right? Because it matches my power that I have. So I'm going to have minus x minus 1 
to the 4 over 4. So we have our fourth degree Taylor polynomial I've graphed it here on top of our graph of ln of x. You can see that our fourth degree polynomial does a nice job of approximating right around its center, x equals 1. Obviously as the function becomes undefined as we hit the axis and then go past it, this polynomial isn't going to be accurate past the axis really, so we can see it veers off there a bit. And it actually doesn't stay super accurate very long, right? It looks out to about two, it's pretty accurate, and then it veers off quite a bit. So if we were centering around one and wanted a good approximation, you know, at some other value, we would either need to take more terms or we would need to adjust where we're centering our approximation. Okay, hopefully this helps you with your Taylor polynomials and Taylor series. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you in the next video.